think the research that Karen's doing, um, talking about life after transplantation, is really important. Um, mainly because I know, probably not for me as much, but for my mum, because I was so young at the time, my mum and my dad always wondered about even stuff that's not really medical related, more things like how would we be afterwards? Would we get married? Would we have boyfriends? Would people accept us like with a scar? Or would we look different to other people? Like, would we get a job? You just, they didn't know. It was completely unknown. We term new ageing populations um, as groups of people who are ageing with conditions that traditionally we would not expect them to survive childhood with. So, for example, children who received a liver transplant in childhood are now growing into adult age. One of our researchers in our department was actually one of the nurses at the Worm Addenbrooke's Hospital who looked after these children um, after they'd had their liver transplants. And we just had a conversation one day about, well, what happened to all these children? Were they all alive? Were they all dead? You know, there was nothing to for us to find out about what their lives were like. So a comment from our interviews was very much um, what do other people say? What do other people tell you? Have other people's lives turned out just like mine? Do other people have the same problem? So what we did um, was put a private lunch on for our, our group of participants which was just joyful because They'd got together again after 20, 30 years. Some of them recognised each other from childhood, remembered playing with each other on the hospital wards. We also held a seminar to disseminate our project findings to them. Um, and through this, we were very mindful that a lot of their cohort had not survived, particularly Ben Hardwick. Um, and because this liver transplant programme really started from Debbie Hardwick's call to That's Life, um, we managed to track down Debbie, um, who was absolutely thrilled to come over and to meet some of the now adult recipients of these transplants and also to meet a lot of the clinical staff. The finding that struck us most forcibly was one that we really weren't expecting, but one that's extremely significant for this group of um, liver transplant recipients. Um, and that is that if they are employed, they have to pay for their prescriptions, which include the immunosuppressants, which they take daily to keep them alive. And we do think that it's actually a tax on living, um, because these children were unable to live 30 years ago. Um, so why should they have to pay just to stay alive? If you are, for example, a survivor of cancer, you get special help from the National Health Service you get special help with your prescription charges across a year. Now we don't have any similar facility for people who are in receipt of cyclosporin or other immunosuppressant drugs. So they have to literally, like anybody else who goes to a doctor and gets a prescription, pay an ongoing prescription charge. And for a number of people whose financial circumstances may not be particularly great, not least because one of the consequences for some people in receipt of a liver transplant is it's sometimes difficult to maintain a full-time job year after year after year. Not everybody, but for some. And therefore, their financial circumstances can be quite demanding. So I think there is a need on government to look at this issue. And I very much hope, whether it's a Conservative, a Labour or a coalition government, in the years to come, this is an issue that a future government will want to address. My message to the government would be to bring up to date the exemption from prescriptions list. This was something that was formulated in the 1960s. At that time, transplants were a dream. Um, they were certainly not as routine as they are today. Today, 100 children a year receive liver transplants. Um, and not having that on the exemption list is a historical anom anomaly. So message to government and to politicians would to be revise that list and enable everybody living with organ transplant to actually be exempt from their prescription charges.